Hello, my name is Clifford Mann. I'm an emergency physician in Taunton, Somerset. My presentation at the conference was on atrial fibrillation, uh, and this arises because this year we published the 2014 NICE guidelines. The take home message is that very little has changed from those guidelines for emergency physicians from the 2006 guidelines that most of you will be familiar with. The first key information that you need to be aware of that has changed since 2006 are the improved systems for scoring stroke risk. We've moved from CHADS2 to CHADS VASC, and uh, that scoring system is available on Android and iPhones, so we don't actually need to remember it. So the take home message around stroke scoring is that AF strokes are particularly severe. If you have an AF related stroke, the chances of being independent for the activities of daily living 12 months on are only 25%. We can overcome or at least diminish the stroke risk by oral anticoagulation. And a rule of thumb is that patients over 65 with a stroke risk factor should be on an oral anticoagulant. People under 65 without a stroke risk factor should not be on an oral anticoagulant. And aspirin is simply not a substitute at all and should not be considered in this indication. As regards the management of acute atrial fibrillation in the emergency department, there is good evidence now that the sooner people are put into sinus rhythm, the more likely they are to remain in sinus rhythm and the easier it will be to put them into sinus rhythm. And therefore there is a compelling argument that wherever it is safe to do so, we should restore sinus rhythm to patients when they first attend the emergency department, rather than delaying that to becoming an outpatient procedure. In patients in whom the decision has been made to restore sinus rhythm, we have the choice of flecainide for patients without structural or ischemic heart disease and albiodarone for those with structural or ischemic heart disease and DC electrical cardioversion for all patient groups. Obviously, we cannot restore sinus rhythm safely unless the patient either has the onset of the dysrhythmia within 48 hours of presentation to us or is stabilised on an oral anticoagulant. In conclusion, the current NICE guidelines offer no particular challenges to emergency physicians. However, we do know that in the UK, the practice of management of atrial fibrillation in emergency departments is very variable, and there is still considerable scope both for better stroke risk reduction and restoration of sinus rhythm in selected patient groups.